Hello and welcome. Welcome back to those following the series and welcome to those who are new to the series. Maybe dived in just to see a little bit about Active Directory and starting a new forest up on IBM Software. And that indeed, as you can see in the background here, is the subject of today's short video. Um, it was pointed out to me that uh, I do an awful lot of Linuxy things and I'm a bit more of a Linux guy than a Windows guy. But in fairness, uh, one of the things that you will probably want to be doing in IBM software once you grab some machines is to actually activate an active directory and set up a new forest and then some domains and within that organizational units, users, etc. So that's what we're going to be doing today. So in precise terms, just like the previous one, one of the things that you may want to do is then set up a... Uh, domain admin user so that you can dive in onto any one of your machines if you're creating many many virtual machines especially Windows ones is to have them all within a domain so you can set policies and you can set things at the domain level that you won't need to do on every single individual machine and then hook them into the domain and there you go they'll all be set up so that's what we're going to cover so we're going to create a new software virtual machine with Windows 2012 R2 Standard Edition on there. We're going to RDP into our new Windows, vanilla Windows server. We're going to ready the network for DNS and Active Directory, and then we're going to add the roles and features. So in particular, we're going to add the Active Directory role, and we're going to add DNS. And then we're going to check that all our DNS entries are there and that everything's working fine for our domain. So that's what we're going to do. A big shout out to the Win Wizard, uh, Mr. Rob Gareth of IBM, for helping me work these things out. Uh, without whom, these windows side of the house would not really be covered in anywhere near as much detail. And these videos may well end up just being very Linuxy. So thanks again to Rob and. Uh, if you ever come across Rob, uh, give him my thanks as well for helping out on all of all things Windows on software. So let's get on and start creating this machine. Okay, so welcome back. So you can probably see right in front of you now, ah, Eamon's already created a machine. Indeed I have, because I didn't want to waste our time going through this whole process of ordering a machine. Uh, I've covered this many, many times in terms of a machine. What I did want to point out was uh, how I went about ordering this particular machine. Because it's going to be our AD Forest, we have ordered it without a public IP. So it's a private-only virtual machine. Um, I did the usual, which was order the device. I'll bring this up. We will go to an hourly even though I've chosen public server, it doesn't really matter. One of them, data center. Come on. It's almost, almost fully loaded. There we go. Data center, London. I chose an 8 gig because it will be a forest machine, two of those. And how do you get a private one? Private node. That'll be a dedicated private node. Or you can have a public node, but then, and if you choose dedicated private node, it'll be on the private network. Um, sorry, either of these will be on the private network. It will be a dedicated one for you. Uh, so you won't have any contention whatsoever, but to be honest, software is so good, a public node will be fine. Um, then I chose Windows 2012 R2. That brings that message up saying your first disk needs to be 100 gig either on SAN or local. And then you get to the network options. And this is where you want to have public bandwidth zero. That's the option. Public bandwidth zero. And then private only, one gig. So that's what I, I mean, hey, you could have 100 meg if you want. Um, but I've got a one gig private network. And then I finished out all the rest of that, continue and order the machine, and there it is. So we have a machine. I just wanted to make sure, how do we get access to it? Well, we have to RDP into this machine on the private network. 
So here's my RDP. I want to edit this and make sure I've got the right password in here. And then I want to start my uh, PPTP connection. Once I've done that and the connection, the VPN is up and running, I can just double click on this and there it is. Continue and we have what we'd expect to see. Now your screen has probably gone all funny, so I'll just go back in here for a second. Um, join me in a minute when I will make it full screen so that we can see our Windows server. As you can see, I've resized the screen so you can hopefully see all of this as well. We have a brand new vanilla Windows 2012 R2 Standard Edition machine. Nothing on it has never been touched. This is the first time we've ever logged into this machine. So first things first, we want this to be our Active Directory um, uh, domain controller. We want this to be the, you know, the forest owner, the domain controller for our new domain. So we want to go down here to the network. Oh, don't want that one. Right click, open the network. So on our network sharing center, we have a private network A. You want to click on there, go to properties, Choose TCP IPv4, go to properties again, and you'll see that this is talking to DNS servers at software. These are the private internal software DNS servers. Um, we don't want that, so we want 10, 113, 118, 122. That's our preferred. And then get rid of all of these entries here. Go OK. You may well get this message, override it. That's absolutely fine, just say yes. So that's good, we have that, but you also need to go back into properties. This time go to advanced, so that's looking good. It's exactly the way we want it. Go to advanced, go to the DNS tab. And you'll notice in here, and your AD will have all sorts of pain and problems if you don't do this. So we want to add a domain suffix. And what was our domain? Well, it was ejk.local. Add that in. And then register this connections address in DNS. Make sure these are ticked. Or I guarantee you, you will have all sorts of pain. And the pain I'm talking about is you will not receive any MSDCS uh, information into or any synchronization between the Active Directory and the actual um, DNS that's running on this server as well. So go OK and OK and close and close. And we can get rid of the network center now. We've done our network work. So now, standard stuff. Once you've done that, you need to add your roles and features. What roles and features are we adding? Well, just like Eli, the computer guy, has, we're following pretty much exactly the same as Eli's videos or anyone else who's done videos on how to set up a, uh, an Active Directory domain controller. The key was to change those DNS settings within um, your software virtual machine before the get-go. Now, now it's standard Microsoft Fair. So we go next, uh, we'll have AD, thank you very much, add the features, DNS, add the features, next, 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 next. Restart it automatically if you want, it'll come up with that anyway. So install and away it goes. And this takes maybe I don't know, maybe about uh, two, three minutes possibly to uh, finalize this installation and then everything will be there. So I'm actually going to wait and let you see it right the way through rather than using video trickery to, uh, to hide anything or, or, or make it out that these things are much quicker than they are. It'll run very, very smoothly and very quickly. Let's give it another couple of minutes. Yeah. It's almost there. Just another minute now.
gives me a chance, I guess, to say, what are we going to do afterwards? Well, it, this is going to come up with the usual installation procedure where it says, in a minute, it'll say in this box in the middle here, you now need to promote this. And we will indeed promote this machine to be the, uh, there it is, promote this server to domain controller. So that's the next thing you want to do. So we click on that. That brings this window up. We are adding a new forest. What are we going to call it? ejk.local. Next. This will now ask us for our DRSM passwords. I think that's the next phase. It's just adding the new forest at the moment. There we go. Yes, this is what it's going to ask us, our functional levels. Well, this for me is a brand new implementation, but it may well be that you want to integrate this later on with a different version of Windows. And you could choose that there for other forests. Um, and again, the domain level, it's only offering us our 2012. So I leave them as default. This will be a brand new private forest for me. Um, you may well want it to integrate with something different. Uh, it already has ticked that it will be the DNS server and the global catalog will go on this machine. Enter the usual password for the DSRM. Uh, what did I make that again? Yeah, make sure they're the same. Next. Ignore this. Next. It will fill this out for us as EJK. Any second now it will be filling that in. There we go. EJK. Click Next. And then finally, it will run through its prereqs. Oh, it'll first ask us where we want all of the logging volumes, etc., to go. I always choose the default. Now we'll have the review. Next, the prerequisites check will run through. It'll say yes in a second. It'll give us a couple of warning messages. Uh, one of them will be it can't connect to a domain server. Well, Kel surprise. Um, and then it'll have some other complaint to make. Um, but there'll only be warning messages. Just ignore them and click install. Oops, that's my other machine firing up. Less than a minute, I reckon, to, um, to say what it has to say. I never realised how long it took doing this uh, prerequisite check before. I guess it's because I'm usually fiddling with other stuff. So, there we go. Like I said, no domain controller, fine. Delegation in DNS, fine. We know that. And then just click install. And away it goes to install this. Again, I'll leave it on the screen. You'll see how quickly this will actually install this. This will take you probably no more than a couple of minutes again. I'm just going to check my emails while that runs through. Feel free to forward this if you've seen it all before. Um, this is just a standard install. Like I said, I'm just going to check my emails while that's running through. Should only be a couple of minutes.
Okay, 187 objects, zero objects, we're there. Okay, it's now configuring, as you can see here, the DNS service. Excellent. It's done successfully. And as I said, it definitely does a reboot. So there was no need to tick the reboot box. So if I hit close now, that will kill this session and off it'll go. Join me in a second when it comes back. I've just logged back in and it's now finally grabbed as well. It's DNS and it's ADDS. So domain services are there. Uh, we need to check our domain services. So if we go to tools, DNS, this is one of the key ones to check. Make sure that your AD test domain is in there. Um, our forward lookup zones should include EJK local and this is what I was talking about, the MSDCS entries. And this should have our domain controller, our domains, global catalog, and our primary domain controller in there. And it does. So that means it's all working. So when I go and run CMD, we should be able to ping ejk.local. Why am I checking that? I'm checking that because when we come to add machines, join machines to our domain, we need to be able to enter the domain name and it will resolve using DNS. And indeed, there it is. So that's it. That is, you know, that is that simple. That is Active Directory running uh, with DNS privately within software and a domain controller all set up and ready to go. We can go in and have a look at the uh, Active Directory domains and trusts. And there they are. Whoops. I don't want to go into this one. Users, sorry. We can add our users now into our actual domain. There we go. That's it, all up and running. Now it's just standard Active Directory that we all love so much in terms of doing all of our security grouping, our policies, etc. My name's Eamon Killian. Once again, abundant thanks to the Win Wizard, Rob Garrett, for uh, helping me out making these Windows videos. And hopefully you're getting some value out of all of these tutorials on how to get things set up within IBM software. Join me next time.